So seven former News of the World journalists, including Rebecca Brooks and Andy Coulson, face phone hacking charges along with the private investigator Glenn Mulcair. The journalists are accused of being part of a criminal conspiracy which targeted more than 600 people, including senior politicians, celebrities and crime victims, most notably the murdered teenager Millie Downer. Our Home Affairs correspondent Andy Davis has this report. 11am at the CPS headquarters in London and opening her file after an 18-month police investigation into oh. hacking, Alison Levitt QC in a matter of seconds quietly changed the narrative of this remarkable story yet again. The eight who will be charged are Rebecca Brooks, Andrew Coulson, Stuart Kuttner, Glenn Mulcair, Greg Miskew, Ian Edmondson, Neville Furlbeck, and James Weatherup. The names and faces may be unfamiliar to many, but in the world of tabloid journalism and in politics, they mattered enormously, especially the names Rebecca Brooks and Andy Coulson. In 2003, he succeeded her as the editor of what was then Britain's biggest selling newspaper, The News of the World. He'd later become David Cameron's communications chief. She elevated to run Rupert Murdoch's businesses in Britain a friend to prime ministers. And yet today, both stood accused of being involved in the most notorious episode of this whole hacking scandal, of conspiring with others to intercept the voicemails of the murdered schoolgirl, Millie Dowler. Within hours of the charges, the prime minister's former press chief gave this statement outside his London home. I'm obviously extremely uh, disappointed by the CPS decision today. Uh, I will fight these allegations when they eventually get to court. But I would like to say one thing today about the Millie Dowler allegations. Anyone who knows me or who's worked with me would know that I wouldn't, more importantly that I didn't, do anything to damage the Millie Dowler investigation. At the News of the World, we worked on behalf of the victims of crime, particularly violent crime, and the idea that I would then sit in my office dreaming up schemes to undermine investigations is simply untrue. And that's all I've got to say today. Thanks very much. What's so striking about today's charges is just how far up the editorial chain at the News of the World, the CPS, claimed this conspiracy went. At seemingly every decision-making level, there was involvement, it's alleged. Involvement in a conspiracy to hack. And that's the key word here, conspiracy. Because they don't have to prove necessarily that a phone's voicemail was unlawfully accessed. What they have to prove here is that there was an agreement to try to access it. An agreement which, for the journalists charged today, lasted allegedly from 2000 to 2006. Stuart Kuttner was once managing editor at the News of the World. Ian Edmondson was a news editor there. Um, so too Greg Miskew. James Weatherup was an assistant news editor. Neville Thurlbeck once their award-winning chief reporter. All big tabloid names. And listen now to how many people they, together with Andy Coulson and Rebecca Brooks, are accused of trying to hack. There is a schedule containing the names of more than 600 people whom the prosecution will say are the victims of this offence. We learned today for the first time that the American actors Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie had allegedly had their phones targeted in 2005 and 2006. Other alleged victims named included the actors Jude Law and former partner Sienna Miller, the footballer Wayne Rooney, chef Delia Smith and the former Deputy Prime Minister John Prescott. And in 2006, nearly a year after he survived the 7th of July bombings, two of those charged today allegedly targeted the phone of Professor John Tulloch. But it was the allegation that five of those charged today had been behind the hacking of Millie Dowler's phone which provoked the most intense reaction. Echoing Andy Coulson's statement, Rebecca Brooks said she was particularly upset about this accusation. It was untrue, she said. She was distressed and angry that it had come to this and denied any knowledge of phone hacking under her editorship. Neville Thurlbeck said he would vigorously fight to clear his reputation. Ian Edmondson, that he would clear his name at trial, he said, when the truth finally emerges. Meanwhile, three other journalists today were informed no charges would be brought against them. One, who had been on police bail for 13 months, said it had cost her her job. 